Hey folks, this is Billy D.K.Y., the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be UFC 108 predictions. And this is only going to be the fight Junior Dos Santos versus Gilbert Ivel. And like I say, I'm just going to add this to my playlist. So if you want to watch them all, you can go to the playlist and watch them all. I think this fight all boils down to Junior Dos Santos is a potential future champion and Gilbert Ivo is not because Gilbert seems to fall short when he steps up against top flight competition and based on his record he has lost uh, 13 fights and I think it may have become a habit for him and Junior Dos Santos has only lost one fight which he originally beat the guy the first time so you know, I th I've been impressed with what I've seen with Junior Santos, so... Okay. Uh, da -da -da. If you're like me, I don't really know much about this Gilbert Ivel, but I mean, I'm sure some of you do know a lot about him. So, basically, this prediction is going to be a lot more educational than, than predictive. However, I will predict what I think is going to happen. Okay, and... Of, uh, and most of the information I'm going to give you today is coming from Wikipedia. Okay, so let's first talk a little bit about uh, Junior Dos Santos. Basically, what I learned from Wikipedia is that he trains with Big Nog and Anderson Silva, which if you train with those guys, I mean, you know, that in itself says a lot about you, that they would let you train with them, plus being around that caliber of people, you know, obviously elevates you to that level to at least some extent. Uh, Junior Dos Santos is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. This is something I did not know and didn't have a clue about. He is currently reigns as the Brazilian heavyweight kickboxing champion with a record of 18-0 and zero, undefeated. So that's why he did such a good job of against Marco Krokop and basically stopped Marco Krokop, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Like I said previously, he's only lost one MMA fight to a guy that he uh, previously had beaten and he lost by an arm bars. But, uh, okay, so some notable fights in the UFC. His first fight was against Fabricio Verdum. He KO'd him in the first round. First, at one minute and 21 seconds of the first round, which, you know, that guy at the, at the time, you know, was considered to be a top contender and since then, I think he moved on to strike force or something like that. So, I mean, that's a big feather in his hat there. His next fight in the UFC was against Stefan Strobe, which we just saw him in 107 against uh, Paulo Buentello. And he KO'd him in the first round in 54 seconds. So, I mean, you can start, you can start to see the pattern. This guy's a badass striker if you go back to his history and realize he's the uh, Brazilian heavyweight kickboxing champion with undefeated. And then let's go talk about the Mirko Krokop fight. And, uh, I mean, basically, he stalked Mirko Krokop down. He did the Mur Mirko Krokop while Mirko does the other guys. You know, he usually stalks, but he was in, he was in Mirko's face. He was, he was stalking him, pressuring him, wasn't scared of him, which, which you know, if you realize the kickboxing champion, you can see why. I mean, the dude was just in Mirko's face the whole time. And, you know, basically, he stopped Mirko technical knock at a verbal submission so you know I can't see and that was in the third round so I mean the dude is a bad striker like I say I haven't seen his ground game he got submitted by armbar maybe he's you know maybe he's lackluster on the ground game because of the great striker maybe he's great in the ground we just hadn't seen it so and so that's why I say do you see the pattern this guy is knocking people out and then you know I see this guy's a young line he's 26 or, you know, he'll be 25, almost 26 on his birthday, which is January 30th. He's weighing in around 236, which the other guy's weighing around about the same. They're saying 235 here, and I'm getting 225 here. So he's going to be around 230. So the weight difference is not going to be a huge factor in this. And I don't see any one of these guys wrestling. So, I mean, I don't see the weight, or the weight being a big deal. Okay, like I said, I don't know Gilbert. I've never seen him fight. And I'm not going to really take time to go through all his fights and watch him, but uh, I do. I have went through what it said on Wikipedia and who he's won and lost against. Basically, the guy's 33, about like say about 235 pounds. Uh, no great weight discrepancy between the two. And on Wikipedia, it says basically he was one of the first guys to employ 
Muay Thai in the MMA, so you know he's going to be a good striker. They say his ground game is mostly defensive, and here's what they say about his reputation. Ivel has acquired through a number of instances a lingering reputation in the MMA community for his temper and poor sportsmanship in the ring. And, and you're going to hear some poor sportsmanship from this guy here in a second. I'm going to tell you some things he's done. Uh, but yeah, let, let me tell you. This is my translation on this guy. Uh, I'm sure he's an extremely talented guy. Probably got a lot of essence or power, spirit, whatever you want to call it. And I think what's happened is others find his limitations, his limits on his talent, and then his true character comes out, which is, you know, not, not good. And I basically seem like a Mike Tyson, you know. When Mike Tyson was, you know, the badass guy knocking everybody out because he's just, you know, just a demon, basically. Then, then people started, you know, finding Mike's limits and Mike had to revert to things that would allow him to protect his ego by biting the Holyfield's ear. Well, I pray, you know, in his mind, he probably thinks... In his mind, he tried to create an ego defense, saying, oh, I could have won, but, you know, I'm just too much of a beast, you know. So, it's basically an ego escape. You know, it's lack of talent, so you do to something that you know is going to get you kicked out or something that way. So, anyway, here's some things that uh, what's that? Gilbert Ivel has done. Uh, in 1998, he bit his opponent like Mike Tyson, so I think he started getting a reputation of being like Mike. 2004, he punched the referee. He was up against the uh, the, the ropes, and the ref was going to make him have that same position in the middle of the ring, and, and he wouldn't do it, and he finally hit the ref. I haven't seen it, but I just read about it. And uh, So, like I say, the guy's reached his limits in some ways. And since then, he's, he's tried to fight numerous times, but couldn't get a license due to his bad behavior in the past. However, since then, he has been able to fight in affliction. He... he he fought Josh Barnett, and, Josh Barnett, and lost in a three-round, third round due to strikes. And uh, some, and then I look through his history to see if there's any notable people he's fought. And here's some notable wins. You know, he won over Pedro Rizzo in the first round by KO. He won over Czech Congo in the second round by TKO. And this is where I get to where it's talking about that when he comes up against top-flight competition, he typically comes up short. Some of his notable losses, he lost to Jeremy Horn by decision, which, you know, is a big heavyweight. He should be able to take Jeremy Horn, in my opinion. Uh, another notable loss, he lost to Vitor Belfort by decision, which, you know, he's again, he's a lot bigger guy, should be able to handle him. If he's a champion kind of caliber guy, and then he lost to Dan Henderson by decision. So he's losing the top flight competition by decision a lot, which probably tells me he's a real tough guy. But all the guys that he lost to decision are a lot smaller than him and wouldn't, aren't really in his category. So when you put somebody in there that's championship material like jo, um, Junior Dos Santos, I mean, I basically see this guy wilting under the pressure of his strikes and kicks and, and he's going to lose. So when it's all said and done, I see this being a stand-up war with Junior Dos Santos KO and Gilbert Ivel in the second or third round. You know, I've never, like I said, I've never seen Gilbert fight. However, based on the records and stuff, I mean, it looks, that's what I see happening. And I see the probability breakdown being 70% Junior Dos Santos winning and 30% Gilbert Ivel. And, you know, maybe, I, I think this guy's going to bring a good addition to the, to the UFC heavyweight division. You know, it seems like we're getting a lot of good guys from a lot of different areas. So, I'm pretty excited to see this guy fight. Hopefully, he proves me wrong, but... I really don't see it happening. And uh, Anyway, if you wouldn't mind rating the video, and until next time, later folks.